when to put your sword away. Uh, kind of a challenging uh, sermon here, something the Lord re revealed to me, and I thought this would make a really good sermon on this, and, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, so turn in your Bible, King James Bible, to Matthew chapter 26. Uh, Matthew chapter 26, beginning in verse 51. I um, just want to take a minute or two here to thank everybody for praying for us. Uh, as our, we've been through a lot of sickness here over the last couple of weeks. And um, still not quite back, but uh, it's been a lot of spiritual attacks mixed in with the sickness as well. So um, been a rough time. But uh, thank you, to everybody out there, for your prayers. Uh, that did actually help quite a bit. But let's start out here, Matthew chapter 26. You have the story of the people. They've come there now for Jesus. They're in the garden, and Jesus and the disciples, and now Judas Iscariot has led them in to betray Jesus Christ and ultimately begin the process where he's put to death. But um, <clears throat> let's read here, Matthew chapter 26, verse 51. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests, and smote off his ear. That will be important as we continue. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. Hmm. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? Hmm, very interesting there. You say, I don't understand. What's the point there? I missed it. Well, here I have a sword, okay? Sort of a Roman type sword, which would, Peter might have actually had something very similar to this. Might have bought it at the local, you know, arm, Roman armory or something, you know. I don't know, uh, Julius's Guns Incorporated or something, or well, Swords Incorporated. But um, if you have this thing drawn and somebody says, uh, put it away, okay, put it in there. But it would be kind of weird to say, put it into his place. Tell, tell Brian to put his sword away. That would be good English, but... Put it up into his place. And I got the I read that and I thought, it's really kind of a weird thing the Lord would have said to Peter there. Put up thy sword into his place. Why does he say his for the sword? Because there's a deeper meaning. You see, whenever you have the King James Bible wording is a little bit odd or strange or whatever, I've noticed, oftentimes there's an advanced revelation there. Um, it's not just a translation, okay? All the blaspheming, atheistic, pro modern professing Christians out there, they look at the King James Bible as just a book. It's not really holy or inspired. It's just a translation, and it, and it could be a better translation and whatever else. And they would see that, and they would say, put up again thy sword into his place. And they would say, actually, the I'll go to the Greek, and I'll look, and I'll see if I can translate it to its place because a sword isn't a his it doesn't have a personality uh, yes it does we'll get back to that um, and so they'll, they'll miss the real blessing of just accepting the text of the King James Bible all right they'll completely blow it so why would it say put up again thy sword into his place is there another area where the Word of God is referred to as a His. Hmm. Because you see, the Word of God is like a sword. Let's look about that. Hebrews chapter 4. Back towards the... We're coming back there to uh, Matthew chapter um, 26. So if you're there, you can stay there. Um, but you can go also to Hebrews chapter... Four, the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and beginning in verse 12 for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword 
piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now look at this. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. You say, what's well, talking about the Holy Spirit? No, it's not. Contacts is talking about the Word of God. And it says, his sight, the eyes of him with whom we have to do. You know, you know when this book is in the room with you, you know it's watching you. It's discerning your thoughts. This is no ordinary book, if you believe it as it stands. Well, if you're some new versionist and whatever else, and a better translation would be, then just go someplace else. Go watch another video. You're wasting your time here, and uh, and don't try to you know talk people out of their faith in the King James Bible either. You wicked infidels out there with your new versions and your Greek and your Hebrew and all that. If I see you in the comments, I'm going to get rid of you. Plain and simple. I want to encourage the body of Christ to believe that they actually have the Word of God in their hands because they do. Um, unlike you, that really you're just an atheist and uh, claiming to have authority and uh, manuscripts ultimately that go back to something that you've never even seen. So take your infidelity someplace else. This channel is for Bible believers. King James Bible believers. All right. And we can look at the cross references there. Matthew chapter 26, verse um, 52. Put up again thy sword into his place. And Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Hmm. You see, the Lord knows your personal sins. And the Lord knew Peter's personal sin. And you know what Peter's personal sin was? He rejected the Bible. He had an issue with the Bible. And look at the context. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 26, verse uh, 54. But how then shall the Scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? Hey, Peter... He knew what was coming. He knew. So there he is. He's walking around. And oh, wait, here they come. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, you're going to take my Savior, Jesus Christ? Oh, no, you don't. Whew. And he attacks. What are you doing, Peter? Hey, Peter, put your sword away. Uh, wait a second. Um, no, they're they're here to take you, Lord. I'm, this is defense. This is clearly defense. I, uh, you know, I, yeah, I cut the guy's ear off, but you know, um, he was supposed to have his ear cut off. I'm trying to defend you here, Lord. What are you doing? Don't you know I'm ready to fight? We're not going to let these guys take you and take you and crucify and everything. Else. And the Lord says, it's "What the scriptures say." Hmm. Put your sword away, Peter. Put it back into his place. You say, well, are you saying then it's the word of God or the physical sword? Well, in context, it's the physical sword that Peter just drew out. and He whacks off the servant's ear. But uh, the Lord's basically saying to him as well, uh, you don't understand the scriptures. So don't make a mess of the scriptures, Peter. Um, I already told you that this stuff is going to happen. So put your sword away and run off. Don't make a fool of yourself. Hmm. Matthew chapter 16. Go to Matthew chapter 16. And I'll show you uh, exactly where Peter had a problem. Matthew chapter 16 Verse 21. It says here, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. 
Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Um, Jesus standing there and he says, Let me explain to you how I'm going to fulfill the scriptures. This has all been planned out. It's all been written out. I'm going to fulfill the scriptures. And Peter says, no, I don't agree. You know, there's a lot of Peter Christians, professing Christians out there right now. And you talk to these people and you say, what do you think? Uh, times are coming and the mark of the beast is coming. And it, Oh, I don't know about that. You know, these, some of these modern Christians, they don't believe in the future but getting worse. They think it's getting better. You know, it's amazing. This whole Asbury re revival thing and whatever else. Oh, we're having a mighty revival. It's going to sweep through America. What? Uh, I don't think I read that in my Bible here. Um, it's not in there. Oh, but we, I've seen things. I, I've, we, I was there. You weren't there, Brian. You don't know what kind of power the Holy Spirit. I don't need to be there. I know what my Bible says about the end times. There are no revivals. Okay? It's not there. What do you have? Well, you want to know a really ironic thing? When you have people that profess that they love Jesus Christ, and yet they refuse what the Bible says about Jesus, and they refuse what the Bible says about the future, and about this nation, you know what Jesus thinks about them? Let's keep reading. Verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. <clears throat> Isn't that something? I mean, here you have Jesus Christ. And he comes along and he says, uh, I need to tell you something. Uh, you know, Bring Jesus to a modern church someplace. And he's there and everybody's, Jesus is here this week. Oh, wow. Everything's great. And, uh, you know, we'll just say he hasn't died on the cross yet. And he comes and he stands up and, they, and you know, there's standing ovation. And, okay, all right. Okay, everybody, please be seated. Okay, let me explain some things to you here. Uh, thank you for having me here this Sunday. And, um, yeah, this coming week, uh, the... Catholic priests in the area here in the Jewish, you know, synagogue, uh, the Jewish, you know, high priests and whatever else, they're kind of conspiring together right now and they're going to go to the Office of Homeland Security and they're going to contact this organization and that organization and, and um, yeah, they're going to put me to death after torturing me publicly. What do you think the modern churches, church Christians would say? No way. There's no way we're going to allow that. There's no way. We won't let Jesus die. Hey, I have a friend that's a Christian lawyer, and we'll fight this thing. You know, hey, we'll, we'll send you, we'll put you on a private jet and send you out to our sister church out in California there, and, and we'll make sure that you're safe and whatever else. Do you think modern Christians would be okay with Jesus dying? Of course not. You know? Asbury Revival, oh, it's you know, all this mighty thing, it's, it's all this great thing going on, and oh, we're just here, we're just going to keep singing and playing our guitars and, and everything, and, and oh, we're having a good time. Uh, <clears throat> hey, you know what? May the wrath of God fall upon this nation, all the abortions and all the other wickedness and the biggest exporter of pornography and all the war crimes we've done. I mean, just make the mind boggle and, and look at the corruption and the greed and the and the debt that this nation has may the wrath of god fall upon this nation oh sir you need to leave but i'm lined up with the scriptures and you're not revival people well uh you're a pharisee you're you're just you're putting god in a box no i'm putting god in a book Okay? The scriptures must be fulfilled. The scriptures will be fulfilled. We're heading towards the time of Jacob's trouble, the fulfillment of the events of the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel and so many other prophecies throughout scripture. The world's not getting better. Well, I love Jesus and I don't know if I could agree with you. 
Get thee behind me, Satan. You see how it works? You profess that these people, they profess that they love Jesus, but they hate his word. Isn't that amazing? Jesus Christ physically on the earth, and he's saying, I'm going to die on the cross. And Peter begins to rebuke him. No, be it far from me. No, that's not happening. No way. I'm not going to let it happen. I'll take up the sword. I'll stop this thing from happening, Jesus. Don't you worry. Me and the boys here, we're going to get our swords out. We're going to fight those Romans, and we'll keep you from dying on the cross, Jesus. Don't worry. Uh, hey, Peter, if you do that, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell. Or, you know, might go to Abraham's bosom and, and whatever else. But, um, yeah, Jesus kind of needs to die on the cross there, Peter. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Oh, yeah, oh, uh, okay, I guess, yeah, that probably is important. Yes, Peter, it's important. <laughs> John chapter 18 The book of John, chapter 18. Brethren, there are times when your flesh is not going to like what's written in this book. I mean, let's just be straight about it. All right. Um, do, we, do any of us really like the thought of the future getting worse? You know? I mean, I'm a preacher, you know, that's what I want to do with the rest of my life. I want to serve the Lord, but it just, you know, I can't look at this world and think that things are going to get better for me as a preacher. They're not. Um, well, someday I'm going to have a, a million subscribers on YouTube. No, I won't. Um, well, I'll be a lot more popular. No, I won't. <laughs> uh, you know, if they ever pass hate crime laws and whatever else in this country, I'm going to jail, you know. Um, why? Um, because the sword of the Spirit said so. That's why. John chapter 18, verses 10 and 11. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? So in that one, it actually says, put it into the sheath. So you have, here's a sword like this, put it into its sheath like that. Put it away, Peter. It's not about this. It's about the word of God being fulfilled. But let me just show you an interesting little thing. Uh, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse 37. Matthew 13, verse 37 through 43. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares of the children uh, are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the, the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Um, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. And look at this. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Um, I've said this statement before, all right, and I need to just say it again. Because it's a very important statement. Um, if you truly believe the King James Bible, uh, you'll understand our God, there's no coincidence with Him. Everything is conspired. <laughs> he plans it all out. 
And God is able to do things with such complexity that it boggles the mind. And we can't see what He's doing in our lives many times. We see through a glass darkly. And sometimes it just is so confusing. And I don't know what you're doing here, Lord, and whatever. And, you know, and you have to examine yourself and you say, you know what? This prayer request that I have, this desire that I have for the future, does it line up with the Scriptures? You know, I'd like to see this country come back and have a very nice future for my son, but uh, that's not according to the Scriptures. It's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible isn't teaching that this country is going to get any better. It isn't. So how can I pray and go contrary to the Scriptures? I can't. <laughs> so what Jesus is saying there in that passage is, He's talking about the, the parable of the seed and the sower and things. But then he says that very interesting statement. That him, or excuse me, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Doesn't everybody have ears? I would think most people do. But what's Jesus talking about? He's saying there's a deeper meaning here. Um, most Christians, they look at the story of you know, Peter in the garden and here comes the people, you know, and whatever else. And, and Peter, you know, pulls the sword out and, boom, and takes the guy's ear off. And the Lord says, put up thy sword again into his place. All right. You know, he puts it away and it's just sort of a, oh, that's the end of the story. Uh, no, there's actually a deeper story there, brethren. And that's the whole point of this study here. But I want you to think about something. What did Peter cut off? The guy's ear? What did we just read in the passage? Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Hmm. Interesting little tie in there. You see, what's going on in the passage that we started out there, Matthew chapter 26, verse 51 through 54, what's going on there? is a physical altercation. Peter actually drew out a physical sword. He cut the guy's physical ear off. Jesus said, put up thy sword into his place. He did. He ran off. Jesus went to trial. There was the physical thing there, but there was also a deeper spiritual meaning. And that's the amazing thing about the Word of God. There is more to it. This is not just a translation. This is not just some book that you can just read and just take it and flop it on the sofa or whatever else there. This is a powerful book, brethren. And you have to understand it. And look at the multiple meanings. And if you read a word and you think, put up like sword again into his place. It's the sword of him? You know, it doesn't make any sense. Look at, when you see verses like that, pray about it and say, Lord, what's the deeper meaning here? You see, the real deep meaning, if you want to get into it, is Jesus said, here's the sword of the Spirit, and it says I'm going to die on the cross. And Peter said, I don't want anything to do with that. I reject this book. I would rather have you, my best friend, alive. I don't want you dying on the cross. And Jesus is saying, if I don't die on the cross, you're going to be in trouble. You and a lot of other people. I have to die on the cross. It's written. And Peter says, I don't know. And here comes the lost people. And Peter takes the sword and he goes, I'm going to take off your ear so that you don't have an ear to hear. Hmm. I'm not going to allow the scripture to be fulfilled. I'm going to stop it from happening because of my love for Jesus. Did Peter love Jesus? Yes, he did. I wouldn't question that. But his love was misplaced. And if Jesus Christ truly wants us to love him, then guess what comes first? A love for this book. Don't say that you love Jesus Christ and that you reject this book. It's not possible. If you want to know more about Jesus Christ, if you really want to have that real true relationship with Him, it's all about the Bible. It's all about His Word. 
And you cannot claim to, I'm a Bible-believing Christian and everything else. I just reject the King James Bible and I kind of choose which versions I want. Don't even talk to me about it. Don't even talk to me about it. Zechariah, back to the Old Testament. The book of Zechariah, chapter 7. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 7 and verse, beginning in verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken, and pulled away the shoulder, and stopped their ears, hmm, that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law, and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it is come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. Boy, that's a problem. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. I'm going to give you a word of prophecy, Americans. That's a prophecy for America. You see, I thought it says Israel. There. It is about Israel, but it's going to repeat and it's going to come to America. And I don't care what Republican runs for political office here coming up. Oh, he's really making some good promises. Forget the guy. America is going to be destroyed. America must be destroyed. And you watch. You watch all the conservative professing Christians out there. They are going to fall head over heels in love with somebody that promises them the moon. I'm going to promise you to make America great again. I'm going to do great things. We're going to have uh, to bring back the fairs, the county fairs. We're going to have all the good times return. We went through the pandemic. We went through these other hard times and whatever else. But we're going to bring America through this war that's coming and through the econ economic hardships and whatever else. We're going to make a great nation again. America's not going to be a great na nation. You know why? Um, because they rejected the word of the Lord. They stopped their ears that they should not hear. Verse 11. That's why. People don't believe this book anymore. I see all these, you know, conservative, you know, I'm a conservative committed Christian or something like this, and I'm a congressman. Let me read to you from the Bible. They'll read a Vatican version all the time. And if they would possibly read the King James Bible, they will never say, I stand by the King James Bible, and all the other ones are corrupt. They're all from the Vatican. They're all wicked, satanic perversions. They will never say it. Ever. And if you think God's going to, you know, bless this nation when the people are using the new versions, you're out of your mind. Again, I did a video, you know, Donald Trump came out and he's holding this, this, uh, you know, he's standing there outside this church and holds this Bible up to people. Oh, he's holding up a King James Bible. Oh, you know, no, it says RSV. If you haven't seen the video, um, this nation has rejected this King James Bible. So God is going to reject this nation. As it says there in verse 13, Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. All the preachers out here saying, you know, any preacher that's left that actually uses the King James Bible and believes that it's God's perfect word, we're out here saying, you better repent. The Bible says bad things are coming. I'm not going to be like Peter. I'm not going to say, um, I can't accept this word. Begin to rebuke the Lord and say, no, Lord, America's headed for some good times. I can't believe what this Bible says here. No, I think things are going to get a lot better. I'm not doing it. I won't do it. 
And if it eventually means I just become so unpopular that nobody wants to watch me and whatever else, and, and um, you know, the new Republican uh, guy comes out or whatever, and, um, and everybody just falls head over heels in love with the guy, and all the America first rallies and America, America. Yeah, it's not going to lead to anything good. God can't bless this nation. The conservatives don't use the King James Bible. So, Amos chapter 5. A few books back to the book of Amos. Amos chapter 5, verse 1, down to verse 15. And this is where we'll end the study. Hear ye this word which I take up against you. Even a lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel is fallen, she shall no more rise. She is forsaken upon her land. There is none to raise her up. Instruction in righteousness. Correction. You know, re rebuke, reprove, rebuke. That's what I'm doing here. Verse 3. For thus saith the Lord God, The city that went out by a thousand shall leave an hundred, and that went, which went forth by an hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, me, and ye shall live. But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba. For Gil Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. You know what Bethel means? The Hebrew word there? The house of God. You mean to tell me that God would actually tell people, Seek not the house of God? Seek not my house? Seek not Bethel? Yeah, that's exactly what God's saying in the context right here. Bethel shall come to naught. Every church building comes to naught. Every single one of them. Verse 6, Seek the Lord and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench, quench it in Bethel. You know, what? God's wrath hits this country. Who is there to really quench it and to stop it and to stand in the way and say, Lord, please stop. Who's really going to be there to stop it? I guarantee you I'm not. I start to see the wrath of God hit this nation and the judgment of God just destroying people and lives being lost and everything else, you think I'm going to stand in the way and say, God, please stop. Have mercy on the, the blessed American people that hate your word and make fun of you and, you know, tear down this blessed book from the pulpit. Why would I stop the judgment of God? Verse 7. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning and maketh the day dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. That strengtheneth and the spoiled against the strong so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. There's my future. And there's your future if you're going to stand by the Bible. People are going to hate you. They will. For as much therefore as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from him burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye shall not drink wine of them. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe. Nothing like that in our government today. And they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. Therefore the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. Hmm. Seek good and not evil that ye may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts 
will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. You know, I hope that the Lord God of hosts is gracious unto the remnant of the body of Christ. I really do. Um, it's going to be bad. But you know what? Uh, verse 13. Therefore the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. You know what? Uh, just a little practical thing here with the sword again. Going along, walking along like this, you have the sword in your hand. Or, you know, you get weird and have it on your back or something like that which I don't really recommend that but <laughs> but the whole point is you're walking along and you have the sword and about that time you hear some screaming and yelling up ahead what's going on and you look up and there's a some guys attacking a woman and you think time to go into action and about that time oh wait there's a whole bunch of other women oh wait they're feminists oh they're not actually those guys aren't attacking the women they're trying to defend against them they're attacking back in the wait are those actually men or are they dressed like men and pretty soon you say you know uh, i think i'm just going to go ahead and put this away and kind of about face and march the opposite direction Obviously, we don't walk around with swords, but uh, <clears throat> it's a shame. But there's a lot of these mall shootings and other things like that. And I've known of guys that just say, don't want to get involved. Because of the way that the laws are so messed up in this country now and whatever else. You know, in the past, you were a hero. You stopped some kind of a shooting or some kind of a bad situation. You pull your sidearm out and you go up and take care of the situation hey you know local hero stops violent crime now vigilante you know taking the law into his own hands and he wouldn't even call the police and he should be put in prison for this or whatever um sometimes you'd be better off just uh keeping it concealed put your sword away you say, well, that'll never happen in terms of the Bible, brother, because we're always supposed to be preaching the gospel to every creature. Really? Uh, I don't agree. Quite frankly, um, I have seen far too many false conversions made because you make the person nervous or whatever else and things. Um, I don't go out of my way to witness to people. Plain and simple. I pray almost every time before we go someplace to a store or to wherever else, Lord, if you want to give a divine appointment, give a divine appointment. Um, I would love to talk to anybody about salvation. But uh, I've seen far too many false converts created because people get pushy with the Bible and they want to make sure that they get plenty of converts and whatever else. And all that they're doing is actually converting people into false professions of faith. Um, it's terrible. It's an absolute horrible thing. And you know what? When God is finished with a nation, um, don't stand in His way when it comes to judgment. Oh, God's going to judge this nation. Well, you know what? The Bible says, and then give the Scriptures and get ready to be attacked. You know, I could have gone into some big theological thing about why Asbury you know doesn't work and I've considered that put it in the comments down below if you think I should do more of a study on the Asbury on the Asbury revival and why it failed um, but I look at the thing and I think okay there's no end times revival of uh, why would God you know bring some kind of Holy Spirit big move um, and it gets talked about on mainstream media and you know you go through all the different little things and I put a lot of that stuff in you know, the woman calls fire upon this other possessed woman's body. There's no scripture for that. You know, not to, I mentioned the thing about there's no women in the scriptures casting out devils. That's there. But then there's no thing of, I put fire on her body or something. There's no scripture for any of that stuff. So, you know, I just look at that and I say, I don't even need to do any kind of a big study on this because it's just so blatantly against the scriptures. Um, and thankfully it came to naught. 
praise the Lord for that. But, uh, hey, brother, you need to go down there and see this thing firsthand. No, I don't. No, I don't. Um, I can put the sword into his place. What do you think of the Asbury Revival? Completely fake. I'll give you a couple of reasons why. Because of this, 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 and that. Boom, done. Let me put my sword down here. I don't need it right now. Um, there's a lot of things you don't need to get the sword out for, brethren. And um, if you see somebody and they're not real and there's no... Um, I mean, uh, just looking out the window here and I just saw somebody walking past out on the street. Um, hey, they might not have ever heard the gospel. Hey, I, I should probably go... Out. No. I'm not going to go waste my time chasing people down in town here and, and trying to get them to make decisions and getting the Bible up in their face and whatever. I don't need to do that. Hey, there's gospel signs out here. There's a website. You can go there. You can watch the salvation message for free. I mean, there's, you know, I don't even know what it, how many videos I'm up to. Uh, with YouTube deleting them a lot, you know, <laughs> I lose track. Uh whatever the videos are now, 1,500 videos or whatever it is here on YouTube, for free. There you go. Learn all about the Bible, um, all the different exotic locations we've gone to over the years and all the, you know, just thousands of hours I've put into this ministry. Free. There you go. You want it? It's free. Uh, but... Um, I guess I just wonder sometimes, you know, how much more, uh, you know, like the how firm a foundation, you know, the, the one lyric goes, uh, what more can he say than to you he hath said, you know. Um, the Lord has spoken, and uh, he gave it to us in this blessed book right here, this King James Bible, the Sword of the Spirit. It's an amazing book. And uh, you don't need this any any more than this. Excuse me, you don't you don't need more than this. You don't need all this stuff back here. These these are the writings of a man, a very fallible man. There's a lot of other writings like that around, and whatever else, study Bibles and things. You have a King James Bible. That's what you need. This is the sword. Um, but there are sometimes, brethren, you'll get around family members. And uh, I'd like to talk about the Bible. Uh, put that book away. I don't want, really want to talk about it. Well, can I ask why? And, and argument? Put it away. Put up the, thy sword into his place. They don't have ears to hear. Okay? And you don't have to attack them physically with it. Um, the Lord uh, healed the man's ear, the servant's ear. He put his ear back on. Whatever happened to that guy, I have no idea. But uh, brethren, we are entering into some times here where a lot of people aren't going to want to hear about the Word of God. Um, but a lot of people are going to claim that uh, the Lord is doing a great work in the future. And uh, that you're terrible if you don't uh, support it. But we have to be people of the Bible. The Bible is our authority. And all these people that come out and they say, I love Jesus, but I reject that King James Bible. Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> That's what they are. They're Satanists. You can't claim to love Jesus and hate His Word. No. You can watch my King Jesus Version uh, series. If you're saved, if you're lost, you won't understand it. But... Um, so that's going to be it for this study. I hope it's been a blessing to you. It's been a real blessing to me. Um, the Lord doesn't expect us to just constantly fight with people. The Lord doesn't expect us to just constantly be trying to uh, get converts and whatever else. Um, the vast majority of people are going to reject the book and they're going to go to hell for all of eternity. Um, wait on the Lord. Let the Lord set up appointments for you to be able to speak about His Word um, because otherwise you're just wasting your time. So um, please do continue to keep us in your prayers and um, the 
just some of the different things we're going through and whatever else, just really do appreciate everybody's prayers out there and your support as well. Um, so that will be it, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.